All right, let's go over the price action this morning. Um, Roy, since you're new, uh, you need to go to Friday. There's a live video, and we're going to go over trade setups this morning, uh, what we're looking for next. But we have two main setups in the trade room. We have a, uh, what's called a retracement trade, a deep retracement trade, and we have a breakout trade. Uh, this is a breakout trade that's happened on the S&P, and this is a deep retracement trade. Let me explain both of them to you that just happened on the NQ. So this is an NQ. I'll just explain them on both of here on this one since we're looking at it. It's live action here. So um, what you want to do, there's, there's two setups in the trade room. So we have one, and if you want to see these before they happen, I'm, I'm going to uh, point out some before they, uh, what we're looking for next. But like I said, play Friday's video. Go to daytradingthefutures.com. Play recent videos. Uh, we gave a deep retracement heads up. It was about 15-minute heads up. And this breakout was about a 30-minute heads up. I want to show you how you can anticipate before these come up. Uh, but there's two setups you're going to stalk in the trade room. This is the NASDAQ futures, the S&P. We had a breakout this morning at 8.02, um, at 8.98, or 49.83 and three quarters. It's as high as 90 and a half. The target is 98 on this setup. 98 is our target. Um, the breakout was 83 and three quarters, where that yellow bar came up. And so let me go over the two types of setups, and we're going to stock some trades here this morning so you can see them. The first the type of setup you're going to look for is a deep retracement. And this is called a slingshot, deep retracement slingshot. So that's the first type of setup um, you're going to look for. That's when you get to the outer zone, which I'll show you what the outer zone is. It's a deep retracement slingshot. That's this setup right here. You, you've commented earlier at 5 o'clock this morning um, what are these arrows entries only at qualified levels. Um, what that means is uh, we have zones. These are our trend zones right here. They're red and they're green. Red meaning we're in a downtrend. Green meaning we're in an uptrend. So if they are green, we're, we're looking for buy setups. If they're red, we're looking for sell setups. So these this is our trend filter and our zones, our buy and sell zones. So once you get below... If you start closing a candle below or a bar below, one below that deep zone, which is the outer zone here, which is green, you're looking to buy. As soon as it closes back inside by a close, meaning a candle, it closes back inside right here where the arrow fires, that is a trigger or an entry level to look for a buy setup to go up. That's called a deep retracement slingshot. That's one of them. The second setup is a momentum play. And what this is, this is called a zone breakout. And what a zone breakout does, it's a continuation of a trend from a retracement, typically a deeper retracement. Let me put this back over here so we can see or in the video. One sec, guys. So that's a zone breakout. So what a zone breakout is, is you are looking for a breakout or continuation of trend. How you can dictate that are there's these dots above. So you have this deep retracement where you get below the outer zone. Then we have these projected breakouts that are above us that give us a big heads up. And sometimes you'll get a 5, 10, 15 minute, 20 minute. Last Friday after news is a 30 minute heads up on the breakout. When that bar turns yellow, that tells us that we are breaking out of that level, and that's a possible entry for a possible move up. So those are the two type of setups we stock every day. We look for a deep retracement slingshot where you get below 
you're getting below the outer zone, right? And this is, you're looking to break out of the dots that form above, which is a breakout of the zone when the yellow bar forms. And like I said, go to daytradingthefutures.com. We played about a 40-minute video. I stalked these two trades before they came up. This one, I gave about a 15-minute heads up to watch out for it. It solidified. And this was about a 30-minute heads up before the big breakdown. So that way, you can see the rationale before they come up. And we will go over that um, this morning anyway. But if you want to see it on a recorded video before these even come up, go to the middle of the video where we're looking at live action on the S&P and it caught that one and that one just like this before they even came up. So that will help you understand the method of what we look for. But we're looking for a deep retracement slingshot down into this deeper zone. That's got to reverse back inside of it. And then we also can do a zone breakout where we break out and get a yellow, yellow bar that forms that tells us this is a breakout level. So the breakout right here was 17 or 17,736 on the S&P. It got as high as what, 746 and three quarters on this push up here um, about 10 minutes ago. All right, so that's what we look for, a deep retracement slingshot and a zone breakout. So you're looking for a deep retracement below the zone and getting back inside in the aerial form. Then you're looking for a zone breakout which is a continuation pattern where these dots form above for a breakdown. So for example, this is a deep zone that's happening right now. Here's a deep zone short. My breakout, my, those, so that's an entry at this level. The breakdown on the zone breakdown would be this level. So I'll show you the S&P in a second. But S&P guy's target is 9 of 49.98. I'll show you in a second. So here's our deep retracement. Let me show you this. This is the same setups every day in all markets. Here's our deep retracement zone setup. D deep slingshot here. That's a buy setup, it looks like. And this is a deep slingshot here that just formed a sell setup. The zone break was at this level. Here's a zone break. The zone break has not happened yet over here, but once it breaks this level of 27 and three quarters, you will have a possible zone break at this level. So you can see how they follow each other. Zone break would be these dots. If they break, you'll see a yellow bar that pops up here in a second. So those are the set setups that you stock, right? This is, a, this is an indicator and strategy-based system so we do have a strategy that goes with this. I'll show you a 90-day performance here in a second. Obviously, past performance is not indicative of future results, but you can see the consistency of the setup. So we have the deep retracement slingshot here, which it gets deep into my outer zone because my outer zone is green. We're looking to short. The arrow fires. There is an audible alert on this indicator you guys are getting on the update. An audible alert fires here, indicating a possible reversal on your speakers. Then the market starts moving up. These, This cup and handle formation is called a cup and handle formation. Here's your cup and handle formation that's that developed. Here's your cup, and then it broke out. So after the deep slingshot, these dots formed all the way back at 820 and then broke out at 827. You had an eight minute heads up on this breakout. Just like when this outer zone, when it started retracing, it was at 820. The outer zone did not get in until 826. You had a six minute heads up on this deep zone slingshot buy and you had an eight minute heads up on the zone breakout. Then we come over to here. We have we close one candle outside of my deep zone. The zone's red. So we're looking for a short arrow fires, audible alert fires on your speakers. We know it's a deep slingshot short because the arrow fires, we close back inside. You can see the candle closes back inside here. That tells us that's a deep retracement short. 
right there. The next setup would be a zone break if it would have closed two candles close with action right now. Two candles close. Yeah, I'll go over targets in a second, Terrence. Then the yellow bar would form, and that's a zone breakdown. So this is what you need to remember. You have a deep retracement slingshot where if the zone is green, we're looking for a close outside of the zone. Outside, not shallow retracement. So some, some of these arrows fire before they get to this deep zone. That is not a deep retracement. That's a shallow retracement. We want to close outside of the zone for a deep retracement. We want to close outside, at least by one candle, of the zone for retracement, and then the arrow will fire when it closes back inside in an audible alert. Then the zone breaks, you'll have a yellow bar that will form on the breakout. Okay? Hold on one sec, guys. i got to do something real quick. On my other Ninja Trader, one second, guys. Okay, so those are the two types of setups you want. Like I said, if you want to see a video of live, pri live price action, I mean, it's live right now, but I'm saying before these even come up, because we're not going to do a 40-minute, 45-minute video stalking these trades like we did last, last week, because I want to show you trades coming up. But if you want to learn how to trade the deep retracement slingshot and the zone break before they come up, we did a really good video this Friday with non-farm payrolls, the most volatile news event every single month, the first week of the month. Go to daytradingfutures.com, click recent video, click live action. If you do that, you'll see how I talked through the video before these come up, 15 minutes and 30 minutes before they even came up, and then they broke, and I show you your targets and so on. Okay? So that's what we look for, though. We look for a deep retracement. Now, did this get to a deep retracement here? No, it did not. See how the arrow formed, but it's not at the deep retracement. It did not close outside of my zone. So this is, is, this is a lower probability trade than this trade on a deep retracement. You want to see deep retracements over here. You want to see a deep get outside the zone. And then you want to see this level break here also. So those are the two types of setups. Deep retracement slingshot and then a zone breakout that will turn the yellow bar. Now, so that's the that's the in queue. Let's look at our S&P trade. I talked yesterday extensively on the microphone for about 40 minutes on breaking out of uh, 90, 97... Um, I'm sorry, 77 breakout. We talked about that yesterday over and over again. Why did I say that we're looking for a 77 breakout and we look for a breakout here? If you traders were in the room, you should have caught this because this happened at 8 o'clock this morning. We had a breakout level right here when we broke out of 802. Why? Because we are in an imbalanced market. If you look, because you can pull yourself in on a, now the new update will not have that. They won't fire at all. I'll show you in a second, Terrence. Because you can fire in those arrows on shallow retracements if you want with a stronger, weaker market with the oscillator below if you want. But if you look at, um, if you look at this breakout here, when the yellow bar turns yellow, that's at 83 and three quarters. It's been as high as 91 and three quarters since eight o'clock this morning. Nice S&P trade. This is a clean breakout. The best time to look for breakouts is if the market is imbalanced. That's what this chart over here to your right is. This is market profile. I send this out to you guys all the time. I marked up these levels yesterday saying if we broke out, which we did, we broke out here last night at, uh, what, 20.05, and we actually had a breakout level that formed also. I was watching it last night is in the room where was it right there that's when the S&P broke out of that trend line Sal right there broke out of the trend line here and that nice little continuation up but that's a breakout level right there breakout that's what we were talking about yesterday Sal breaking out of that 
77 mark. It broke out right at 77 on the breakout. That's what we're stalking yesterday, trying to let it break out of that high. It did it last night, unfortunately, when uh, when nobody was really around. But today, here's a, the next breakout right there. You can see the breakout. What? Why is this an important breakout? How do I have a 98 target? Because if you look at how we like to trade market profile, market profile has been around since 1985. This is not your standard 30-minute market profile. This profile looks at multiple hours to find key breakout levels. This is all the participants in the market, all the hedge funds, all the banks, all the professional traders, all the prop firms, amateur traders, doesn't matter. This takes all the volume and it spits out this big blue line. This big blue thick line is volume profile. That is the POC or the point of control. This lets us know where the most volume is traded in this instrument that we're looking at. From this control point, we have two levels that are derived from this. We have what's called a high value area and we have what's called a low value area. From the high value area and the low value area, if we get outside of these areas, if we get outside a profile, we have what's called an imbalanced market. And this has worked since 1985 for 39 years. This is imbalanced, imbalanced market. So when you're inside a profile, you are in a range market. And it hit the low yesterday and exploded to the upside. We were talking about that yesterday. This is a balanced market. So whatever market you can profile, any market you want, NASDAQ futures, Dow, you know, gold, crude oil, whatever you want, this is the S&P. So we knew and we know that if we go from a balanced market, a balanced market is between a high value area, HPA, this is the red, high value is the red. If I go from, if I'm high value area here, my low value area is green, is derived from the POC, point of control. This is all the participants in the market. It's, it's not my opinion, it's not your opinion. It's actually what's happening internally with the market. That's why this indicator I've never found in 30 plus years of any one indicator that's better than market profile, if you know how to read it right. But you can't just use shorter time frame market profiles. They don't work very well. So there's high value. There's your high value. And here's low value. So what we want to do is we want to get into imbalanced markets. We want to get into imbalanced markets because if we get into imbalanced markets, then the market has no resistance above or no support below. And that's where rolling position traders or counter trend traders get caught. So anything above high value, you got all these counter trend traders trying to short the market, short the market. And that fuels the market to the upside because there's no resistance above us. Now what we can do is we can look at previous days profiles going a couple days back and find targets. Or we can actually find levels where price should go to as a magnet. So what we want to try to do then is when, once the market broke out here this morning, it closed a candle, the open versus close, closed at 7.50 this morning, broke out a market profile. These are the best times when you get into what's called an imbalanced market right here. We're in an imbalanced market. There's no resistance. There's no market profile above us. We broke outside of the value of all the participants in the market. It just caught them short at this level. So now these buy stops are going to get hit to cover the shorts, and you'll see this market like to follow through. So in an imbalanced market, what we want to see is we want to see my breakout level, my zone breakout. We want the zone breakouts to happen in an imbalanced market. So this is where we watch for zone breakouts and deep buy slingshots. So now in this level from here to here, we're looking for a slingshot. So what so look when it broke out, it broke out at 750. Here's where we broke out a market profile. There's 750. This is all the participants in the market. All of them. It's 
not a lagging indicator, it's not a moving average, it's not a stochastic, it's none of that garbage for using them as, as, as tier one indicators. The tier one indicator is market profile. It tells us where the market, market participants are and where there's least path of resistance and least path of support to drive this market. So there's where market profile broke out here, right there. It broke out at that level. So that tells us we're into an imbalanced market right here. Oops. We're imbalanced at 750 it closed right here. So we know that we're in an imbalanced market, that we have a high probability of success, that there's a lot of traders or algorithms that are going to be short at high value because the market likes to stay between value levels, high value and low value. It bounces in between them. We saw it today for about two hours. Hit low value, hit high value, hit low value, have high value. Then it broke out. So we know that taking a breakout when market profile is getting into an imbalanced market at the same time, this is a super high probability trade because we're into what? We're now into an imbalanced market on a breakout. These are the best time to take zone breakouts. Now we're in an imbalanced market. All right? So what we can do then is we can trade these setups, these zone breakouts when these bars turn yellow into imbalanced markets because we, we know that we are in where all the trading participants are typically inside of profile, HV and high value, low value area. They like to bounce in between these low value, high value areas. Once it breaks that level, we get nothing but right vice versa if we break below low value area we had right here we broke down through low value area at this level and here were our zone breakdowns on our chart we had a zone breakdown here around this level and we had a zone breakdown right around this level here because you're in an imbalanced market you're below all the market participants are in between low value and high value I'm sorry, low, uh, low value was there, right there, sorry. So it must have been right around that level. So th this is where you look for zone breakdowns because we are below low value area right there, right? So you're looking for a crash in the market, which it does. Let's get this out of the way. You see the big crash in the market. Now, if we get back inside a profile, then we're looking for zone outer retracements and what's the target if you get a zone outer retracement that's right on top market profile we've seen it happen exactly yesterday I sent the charts out to you what's our target all the way on the opposite side of profile and I did it yesterday I sent those charts out to everybody or Gerald did so if I get back inside a profile if I come down and touch it and I get an outer zone retracement we get an outer zone retracement here and it drove the market from 56 all the way to 75 on the S&P. Then we broke down inside a profile again, retested profile. We actually had, this is the one we had, another auto retracement, drove itself down to low value area. So you can use market profile to find imbalanced markets, one, for breakouts. You, you wanna look for the breakouts, these, uh, these zone breakouts in this imbalanced market. But also, you want to see these deep zone buy retracements on HV and LVA when they fire. Okay? So, let's get into this a little further. Terrence asked uh, these that fire on, these are the outer edge slingshots on the strategy that you guys are getting. This is yesterday. We had one outer edge, two outer edge, three outer edge, four outer edge setups on the S&P. We haven't. We almost had an outer edge here. Almost hit 69 three quarters. The 6:30 this morning. It just didn't make the team. Instead, we had a breakout. Just happened right there. I just showed you that moved the market up. But those are outer edge slingshots. Okay, you're getting to the outer edge of the outer zone, and you're looking for a retracement. Outer edge slingshots. Outer zone slingshots. Now. We can look at performance over the past 90 days, 
Now, obviously, and make sure you understand this, past performance is not indicative of future results. Remember that past performance is not indicative of future results, but you can get an idea of the consistency of the setup. So these are just breakout trades uh, for the last 90 days from November 6th all the way to last week, or we're going into this week right now. So this is this breakout right here. This is breaking through these highs. So if I look at the consistency of the setup over a 90-day period, this is one contract on the S&P. One contract. This is not two or three or four or five, six contracts. This is one contract. What I want you to notice is this, is that I want you to notice that these are all the trades that happened during the week. These are weekly levels weekly trades on the breakout levels with one contract on the S&P. This is with the 25 tick stop on the 113.13 Renko chart. It shows you the consistency of the breakout trades <clears throat> while, using, while using specific parameters for stops and targets and so on. So I will show you, uh, members, I will show you what chart to set up, uh, we'll actually send the chart. The chart will be set up on a workspace. And I will show you the um, on how uh, what time frame it is and what Renko size it is and how you can use it on other markets and so on. Okay, this is the zone this is the zone breakout only. All right, if we look at a summary, I want to show you one thing that's neat about this. The key is look at the largest winning trade. And look at the largest losing trade per one contract. And now you can look at the micros also. This is a big contract. The micros are one-tenth of this. Now this is a strategy, per se. My point is, this is a 90-day period from 11.8 to 2.7. Okay, this is today. The end date's today. I want to show you the profit factors, 4 over 4. The key is, look at the average winning trade versus average losing trade. That's the key. Is the reward versus risk. Okay? So we're going to go over this more. And obviously, like I said, past performance is not indicative of future results. But what you do is get an idea of the consistency of the setup. And so I'll be going over this with you. Uh, we'll do this a little bit in the conference call. I'll go over different, uh, um, different reports on different... Um, markets, for instance, if I put gold up, for instance, make sure I got the right gold contract on here. Make sure I'm updated. Yeah, I'm updated. So if we look at, um, let's say if I just put gold up, where's gold? I know some traders like gold. Gold's pretty volatile. I'll fire gold up in a second. But th the key is this, is looking for the deep retracement and then the shallow retracement. I mean the uh, the continuation, right? So yesterday we had this deep retracement that we stalked, and good job. Um, I sent out a, 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 a congrats to Sal, Leo, Aaron. You guys all caught this trade before it happened. So those guys are talking about this trade coming up right there, about 1:36 when I was in the room. It came up. They all got short. Nice little trade set up. And it came down. This is the next zone breakdown on deck, but look how it never broke. Right? So you have your deep retracement outer edge trade into the room that happens here. And then you got your zone breakdowns that happen here. But see, it never turned yellow. It never broke down. Then we had another deep zone that happened there also. Okay? So I just want to show you the consistency of this setup. I'll go with gold here, too. And you guys will have these on your own charts. So this is gold over the past 90 days. This is one contract, like I said, one contract. My point is, this, this just breakout trades by themselves. One contract. These are the weekly results on gold with one contract with a 25 tick stop off the 113.13 Rinko. What you guys have to understand about this 
is that when you trade in these, and this is a large contract, right? I mean, there are minis you can trade and stuff like that, one-tenth of this and all this stuff. The point is, is that it's about the reward to risk. When you go to a daily summary, and I have a thousand tick contract out, a thousand point on this, a thousand tick to try to get on these. But let me get a summary here, sorry. Look at the largest winning trade and look at the largest losing trade. Largest winning, largest losing. This is 11.9 to 2.7. Some traders get so much caught up in the percent profitability that they lose the whole fact that you can have 99% accuracy and have a losing algorithm. Because if your average size trade, your average losing trade is three times larger than your average winning trade, then you're going to be upside down on your reward to risk. We'll go over that this Friday. This Friday, I want to go over these numbers and we'll go over this stuff. Right? Obviously, like I said, past performance is not indicative of future results, but you need to understand the consistency of the setup is there. We just have to understand how to apply it in these markets. Okay? So if we look at the S&P here this morning, there's our breakout. Now, what's our target? Let's look at our target. The breakout was here at 83 and 3 quarters. Our target is going to be what? Right there. Our target for today is going to be 97 and a half on this push. We still have five points of upside on the push on this S&P. This is a symmetrical wedge I drew, drawn in for yesterday. I want you guys to keep in mind this level. This level is a huge market profile level. 55 and a half is a critical breakdown if we ever break back down ever. But I said yesterday, we may break out a symmetrical wedge. It broke out, retested right to my wedge. On low value area this morning at 6 o'clock this morning, and it's been moving up. There's our breakout, went to an imbalanced market. We got our buy signal that happened in the room at 8 o'clock this morning. There's your buy signal at 83 and 3 quarter. The targets you can use, Terrence, are previous day market profile targets. They're really good targets used for our current profile targets also. If you look on crude oil right now, what trade is this right here that's happening right now in crude oil? That's a deep retracement trade. It got outside the outer zone. It closed back inside the outer zone at 73 and 85. Got up to high as 74.03. So, you know, crude, they don't come up too often. Uh, you get a lot of them on NQ. I'm going to show you how to lower your stop on these setups after I get off the video. I'm going to show you how you can use a smaller Renko for these setups to fire in these trades. 